we're going to get back. Uh, back in November, I was talking about the keys of the kingdom, and those are the visitors. They they receive their their free gift as a key with the scripture on it, and it is. Uh, this is where we're really this. If if you remember, we're doing the the three to five. Okay, three years, and five to seven was what were to be the fruit of the next five to seven years comes out of the three, and then the ten is the is the uh, the next chapter that we'll be stepping into. But uh, what you'll see here is a re representation of my keys. These are the keys that I carry, and everything on there is is I'm going to give you the prophetic understanding of this. So if you've been around me a while, you know I got a lot of them. And what's that one right in the center? Beulah's place key ring. Good to see Andy today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and my and my Fred Myers just rewards. You betcha. You know I'm all about getting re rewards. But you know there's some prophetic stuff in this. And we prayed for you for your message over there at Zion, and I'm sure it was great. And I wanted to make sure you guys uh, really uh, got touched. So, um, so I just want to look at these quickly. So Scott nailed this right off the bat. The rewards card. All right. And there's a key that comes with the key of the kingdom, where we do have favor. What does it say? Jesus grew in favor with God and man. That's a reward. It's, it's, one of, it's, it's one of the things, just being ourselves, being who we are in Christ, there's a reward that the world will respond to. All right? I don't shop at Fred Meyer's much, but you know what? I got the card. I was over on the coast, and we went and bought some stuff at Safeway. I don't go to Safeway. But because I had to card years ago i still got my discount all right so there's you know, there's things in the world that we get responded to but for who we are there's favor that comes towards us all right what else do you see here see that key right there the red one that is the key to this house it's red for purpose i know that when i'm coming to the church that's the key i want it's it's the representation of blood all right that what's that one that is my vehicle that's my highlander well, actually, it's Patty's Highlander. I just get to use it. I'm the chauffeur. Ask her. That's what I am. That's the role I play. I put on a little hat, and I drive. And when people ask me, I'm just a chauffeur. I just drive her around. That's my position in this situation. And I change hats very quickly. All right, going on. These are the keys to the champagne rocket. My, all right? That's the one that doesn't know what the 55 is not idling. And I drive it very carefully on the sidewalk. Or on this on the street. All right, and now now I know very some of you may know what this. I know Sandy does, but do you know what that is? What is the name of that? It's a cubaton. Now there are keys and how a cubaton works. Well, I won't tell you how it works, but it's very good. It's a versatile uh, self defense situation. All right, so it's used, it's good for breaking glass if you're trapped in your car, or it's also used in leverage. And points of owie on the body. So there are keys that God has in, in keys to the kingdom that are owies against the enemy. I like that. He uses the he gives the scriptures to use his warfare. And in the center, you'll see the Beulah's place keychain. That's a representation of what's the center of a, her, a heart of a servant is to not just receive for its own person, not just to receive for me, but this house receives and gives back. And Beulah's Place is our local beneficiary of, of our tithe every month. This church tithes every month. Okay? I don't, you know, I'm not about making money for me. It's about getting the money from kingdom out and touching the ministries. So Andy's Beulah's Place, that's what we support here. And we have some others that we support. And that's, all, that's what a church, I believe, is what a church should do. I'm not here building this, this house. This, this thing could burn down tomorrow. All right, and we'd have to go to my house or some other boss. We'd have to be in houses, but you know what? It's this is just a building. We are the church, and as long as we function as a living, breathing, uh, living stones building to a habitation, that's the church I'm talking about—a habitation for His presence. So there's a quick representation of what keys are, and there's other keys. Those are keys to my cabin. Uh, there's this this key here is uh, some other secret things. That's my front door key. So, you know, those, there's keys, and they all represent things. And, and we've been talking for some time, for those that have been around for a while, for visitors, I'll just uh, quickly go over this board. So on the board here, uh, for several years, we've been working on what King of. That's, you can go back into our archives on YouTube and watch them. 
normal Christianity. We've started uh, engaging in that. I've been working towards that for about a year and a half. And we started really engaging that this year. And what normal Christianity is really abiding in Christ. And uh, as I stepped into the training and teaching of the keys of the kingdom, the first key is the way of sonship. That's the very first key you and I have, so being sons or daughters. And make sure I get my app up. Okay, we're good to go. So key number one, and, oh, come back here. Key number one on the app, if you're using it, is that you are a son or a daughter, are blessed because of the revelation God has given you. So as long as, you know, revelation comes, it's understanding. Um, when you first become a brand new Christian, hey, you're just happy that you're someplace that you weren't before. It's you've been accepted, you've been brought in, you've been ex- uh, cleansed of the of, of the stuff that that has hindered your relationship. So the the first one, <clears throat> the way of sonship is oneness. There's a oneness that suddenly you get to experience, and that oneness is wholeness. As you become, as the revelation comes to you, of your oneness with God, it brings wholeness to your being. It brings wholeness to your questions. It quiets them. We, we, we talked about the new creation in Christ a couple weeks ago. And, and the, the I don't, there's no, I'm just going to use this. Religion says that, okay, you're saved. Hey, woo! Okay, now you've got to crucify the old man because he's going to crawl out of that grave. You're going to have to crucify your flesh every day. You're going to have to do, 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 and you've got all this work to do. And I'm going in the back of the class. You know, I'm always in the back of the class. In the back row going, like Horshack. Oh, oh. Okay, from Welcome Back Cotter. I'm going, wait a minute. The word says I was crucified with Christ. I died with him. So, and then I was resurrected in Christ and seated in heavenly places. And I have become a new creation. So the new creation is what I am. How does what you're telling me about crucifying the old man and all that, how does that work? Because the old man dead. Dead, 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 worse than a doornail, ain't coming back, been burned up, nothing left, not even a cinder, not even the aroma. And I'm not about to resurrect that critter to bring it back because it has no right to be in my life because I am a new creation. Did you kill that spider or are you just giving me a hallelujah back there? All right, good deal. I thought he was going to throw a book at me. He was just back there killing a spider or something. So this is where we are. This is the reality. So, Father, I thank you that we are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far above every principality and power and all those things, and that we release that truth into this reality that we live in, that we are seated in Christ, but we are walking out our lives to exhibit the goodness of the kingdom of God, to release the realities of how good our Father is, and that we would become the perfect representation and reflection of you to this world, that we would allow you, that we could co-labor with you, that you would even choose us because you loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. That is the reality that I walk in. I am seated in heavenly places. Far above all that principalities and power stuff, because it's, you know what? When I'm seated in Christ, you've heard me say this before, but I'm going to re-say it again. We are seated with him, and the Father is making our enemies Jesus' footstool. So as I'm sitting in Christ, he's making my enemies my footstool. I am resting in him. I'm resting in the completed work of Christ. I didn't even bring this up, but Patty, if you could bring up Philippians 2.13. I'm on a roll now, so you're going to have to be scrambling back there. So Philippians 2.13, if you have that in your Bibles, go there real quickly. Because this is the way of sonship. This is what sonship looks like. This is how it functions. We've been raised in a, a, a Burger King, McDonald's mentality where I have to have it now. I want, I want, I got a credit card and I know how to do short-term gratification by running down to the store and buying what I want. Because you know what? I got a hole here and I have to have it filled. Oh, there it is. Okay. But this is the truth of the matter. This is the truth of who we are. For it is God who is at work in you. Say that. For it is God who is at work in me. Okay, I'm going to say you because I'm pointing at you. All right. In me, both to what? Will and to work for what? His good pleasure. So, 
Wah! Oh, my gracious, that should be tattooed across my forehead so that when I look in the mirror, I can read it properly. Backward on here, frontwards in the mirror. Anybody else I can, it's a good conversation icebreaker. What's your head say? It says the scripture, Philippians 2.13, for it is God who is at work in me, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. He's working in me so that I don't have to figure out what his good pleasure is. He's doing the work to reveal it to me. I don't have to go around like blind man's bluff trying to figure out how to make my dad happy. He's showing me. He's carefully working inside of me to will. That's an important thing right there, to will. It's all about choice. Sonship is about choice. You can choose to walk in it or you can choose not to. You can choose to walk in his love or choose not to, but that doesn't stop the love from being there. It's like if you take me out a mile off the coast here outside of Newport and you chuck me in the water, I'm going to be wet whether I like it or not. The love of God's like the ocean. You're going to fall in it. You may not accept it, but it's still going to get you wet. It's still going to touch you. His love will not be stopped by you going, I don't want to talk to you today. I am a perfect example of that. I did that to him for quite a, quite a while when I was PO'd at him. I don't want to talk to you no more. You made me, you bummed me out. You let me down. And, you know, as a child, he didn't backhand me. He went, Mike, you just don't understand me. I went, yeah, I don't understand why you didn't ask what I, answer what I asked you to do. As a child would, because I wasn't the smartest block in the stable. You know, I, mean, it's, I, was, I figured God was like my little thing on a chain, and I could just yank the chain, and he'd do what I want, as any selfish child would. But when he didn't, he was trying to get my attention because he had better plans. He was working in me. All right, we all know that. He's still working on me. You know that old song? You've heard them songs from way back in those days. Now, that's true. We are still under construction. Why else, when you get in a house full of broken people that are still being worked on, you got to love each other. Good Lord. You're getting into a room of people that are all broken. You're going, oh, you see that guy's over there? He's broken. He's broke, broke over there. Okay? You see how broken they are? We're okay. We're over here. We're, you guys all broken, man. You know, you start doing that stuff, and it's just, duh. Yeah. But see, you can't do that because we're all broken. We're all being worked on. You don't want him to come over there and go, oh, look here. Woohoo. You know, it's like the odds. Never mind the man behind the curtain. See, we're all, we've got these faces on. We hide behind the curtains. We're trying to really to, to hide what, that we're all under construction. But he's working on every one of us in this room. He's working on me. And I'm okay with that. I am. I am secure enough in my life and where I am as a pastor. I'll tell you when I have insecure moments. I'll tell you when he's me I'm messed up. Because you know what? If you look at me and say, well, Pastor Mike's got his, his stuff together, you don't live with me. Ask that blonde girl back there. With it. Okay, she'll tell you. He's messed up just like the rest of us, okay? Because I am not, it's not about my ego. My, my heart is for you guys, each and every one of us, to say, you know what? Today I'm not pulling my weight. For whatever reason, I can't do it. Would you pray for me? Because you know what? That's what life is. That's inside your body, the, the cell's doing this little work. Dun, dun, dun. All right? What does the platelets do? It brings oxygen. I'm not really good at science, but I'm making it up. So it sounds good. Just follow me. So it brings the oxygen down here. This little cell's going. <gasps> and the little platelet goes. <gasps> okay? That's how it works. Okay? That's how it works, man. God works with me that way. I'm putting out everything I got. And he comes down. He says, breathe the breath of life, Mike. Here it comes. And he breathes it into me. I'm like, oh, man, I'm feeling better now. Holy Spirit, quick is my mortal body, right? Okay, so you're getting this. This is his work. He's working in me, both to will. I want to do it, even when I don't. When I was mad at him, I was like, I don't want to talk to you for months. Every day I wake up, I'm still in the twilight zone. You know, I'm not, I haven't got near coffee because I don't drink it. So I'm still in the in the nice warm bed, and Holy Spirit's going, Mike, da, 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 and just, like, you stop poking at me. I don't want to talk to you. You made me mad. Don't get away from me. Every flipping day until after months, I finally go, okay, fine. 
I will go to church. I will go find a church that can sit in and nobody knows me. Very small. And I'll just hide there just to shut you up. And this is, I'm just being transparent because this is where I was at. Because he was working. And so he wore me out. He wore me out. Thank God for the hound of heaven. You know, the enemy wants to wear down the saints. Well, you know what? The Holy Spirit had to wear me out because I was pretty stubborn, boneheaded. I was really unhappy with him. So he kept poking at me. Finally, I surrendered. I got into a little glass storefront church with maybe 30, 40, maybe about the size of ours. And then he nailed me right from the pulpit. Bam, through that pastor. <laughs> Wrecked my life. Got me back together. And there I am. I've been working. He's been working at me with me ever since. So that was the thing to will and to work for his good pleasure. I enjoyed, I finally got to the place at that time in my life, I was like, oh, okay, I'm done with this thing. I've held a fence with you. Okay, it's over and done with. I don't understand it. I don't have to understand it. I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm going to wrap this bugger up, and I'm going to put it over here, and if we ever have to go look at it again, fine. If not, it, it's dead and gone because I'm not going to hold a fence anymore because I'm just you're making me crazy, bugging me every morning because you love me. I know that. Man, did you really have to get me up at 3 in the morning sometimes? But it was, it, it was just, he just was not going to give up. And that was to break my will to have a way for his will to take over my life. Does that make sense? This is what sonship or daughtership is. It's the breaking of the stuff that's contrary to his heart so that we can reflect him. It's the oneness. He looks at us and he goes, oh, oh. Just a little smudge there. It doesn't quite look like me. And he looks and he says, okay, I'm going to do this and adjust this. And Oh, there's a, the heart's a little, oh, there's a bruise there. And he works on our bruises because he said, my heart's not broken, but yours is. Can I touch that? And he touches the heart. Then he goes, ooh, ah, I was there for that. I remember that event. I saw what happened to you. Let's talk about that. Conversation. That's that's you know, and you, we're all like we're all bound up like this. It's like ah. he says, okay, I see why you're bound up. Can I just bring this and free you a little bit? Okay, there. Okay, the arm's free, but it's still. Can we have a little spiritual therapy here? Okay, and it's like, oh, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. See, that's. The will, the freeing that we experience in His love. And now suddenly we start to move again. Because life has bound us up and broken us. And we've run over and rototilled and, and spit upon. See, this is, this is where He brings us from the background to the forefront. Because He wants us to feel how special we are. Then He looks at us and goes, now I see myself. I see myself. And then people can look at you and suddenly they go, hmm, I know you. Do I know you? I've never met you, have you? But boy, there's something you look familiar. Yes, it's Christ in you that's shining through, and I'm seeing that because my spirit's reacting to the spirit of Christ in you. See? This is what happens. He sees his reflection in us as he looks on us, and then suddenly the world starts to see a reflection of the Father. And then we can be like Christ. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's the image that he's trying to project through us and upon us in the oneness of that's the oneness that we are as sons and daughters. We look like our dad. All right? You look at my son David. He's over there drawing. He's got something prophetic going on. You know, there's a likeness. If you look at my daughter who's with, at home with Becca today, you know, she looks like her mom and I. There's a likeness. And that same likeness is going on inside of us. And then as we come into a wholeness, there's restoration. The broken pieces, they're not just just glazed over. There's total refreshing restoration to the original set. It's not like, you know, I broke this arm when I was a kid. You look at the x-ray, you can see the little <laughs> where it all grew back together. No, that's not how God fixes us. We're not, we're not, we're not going around like crack pots. Okay? It's totally restored like brand new. Bam! New creation means new creation. All the brokenness that came after, before the cross and before that acceptance not there. Don't go digging it up. Don't bring up that. You know, we are healed and restored from this point. All right, so sonship. Let's talk about, oh, the new creation is now. Now. 
Don't say it's going to start maybe tomorrow, this afternoon, after I've had my, you know, my peanut butter sandwich and glass of chocolate milk. Okay? That's a combination. Personally, well, it's okay. I like dunking things. I like my Oreo cookies dunked in my strawberry milk. That's really good. Yeah, strawberry milk and chocolate and, and Oreos. you got to try it. So anyhow, I, I digress. This new creation is now. Sonship. All right, now we're going to talk about some owies. Okay, sonship, daughter, daughterhood. We have the McDonald's or Burger King mentality. I want it now. I want my maturity now. Okay. Well, you don't want to say that. Okay, you may think it. You may want to go, I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm going to go and I just want it now. I can't wait. When we go into this, sonship talks about maturity. Maturity. There's a word that, that you just, ah, I don't know if I like that word. We've all gone through that when we were in that stage between, say, 9 years old and 12 years old, and we were still acting like kids, and the parent went, would you just grow up? I don't know what it looks like. I mean, I, I, maybe you guys never heard that. I did. I was five foot eleven, and I was still twelve. And like, I am kind of grown up, but I'm not grown up on the inside yet. My body may be saying I'm big, bad, and strong, but my inside's going, "I'm a little kid." And maturity with sonship is the challenge, or as a daughter, there's a beauty that comes out of the of the woman of God as the maturity comes. Man, there's a there's an aroma of a woman of God. That when they walk in the room, you man, you feel royalty. You feel royalty when a woman of God walks in the room. There is something that they carry that us guys, the men of God that we are, we go, man, there's there's a bride of Christ over there. Ooh, that's honorable. Wow. Wow. God's all over that. He loves that that bridal thing. And a daughterhood that we you carry this oneness and a wholeness. That bride of Christ thing comes through you, ladies, like, wow. Okay, us guys, we're like we're like big, bold, and we're the Lion of Judah thing, Rawr, you know, and we're just like we're rippling, oh, just studly, you know, we're we're all about that. Okay, we, he's like, man, we're ready to walk on water, man. Get my stuff down here. Okay, so you know, there's this this different representation of men and women, but together, when we're around each other, there's a there's a reflection of Christ. That oneness, the wholeness, starts to come through. And the maturity starts happening. And what's that word right there? Ego is removed. Man, let go my ego. Man, I was like, get off my ego. Holy Spirit, this is my territory. I like it the way I am. And he goes, no, you don't. I said, yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I like it this way. He goes, oh, really? And then he holds up the mirror and I go, whoa, what's that? He says, that's you. Oh. Man, I thought I looked better than that. That's not the reflection I'm trying to get. My ego's in the way. And see, that's the, as we mature, and uh, probably last summer I talked about this, as we mature, it's going this way, and ego's going this way. It's decreasing. So it's getting wiped out. It's being removed because we are coming into the place of the new creation, and we're starting to have a mind of Christ, not the mind of me. Okay? So the ego is being removed in this in maturity process. And sonship, we, we come from being children of God. Say, I am a child of God. Yes, hallelujah, what a great place to start. But you know what? Children, they run amok. It's okay. You're kids. You're allowed to be kids in the kingdom. I love being a kid in the kingdom. It's like, man, let me loose in the candy store. I'm going for the Nikos. Remember the Nikos, the little things that look like little nickels and they were all different colors? Man, I love those. Candy cigarettes, remember those? No, probably most of you are like, I don't remember those. They weren't even around. I'm aging myself here. But I want you to, we are children. Children don't have any, it's like they run into the bedroom in the most inappropriate times because they just, oh, dad, mom's in there. Boom, the door comes flying open. They dive on the bed. And you're going, ah, it's kids' children. Maturity comes. Then they go, Knock, knock, knock. We better check first. Duk, 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 duk. Okay? You know, when I'm on vacation, you call me up, you may get this answer. 
Are you dying or are you bleeding? Because I'm on vacation. I'm disconnected. There's, there's things that happen in our lives. We need refreshed. So we get away, and there's this really cool thing that happens in the maturity. Our ego is removed, and then character is starting to be worked. Ooh, man, I am still in that one. I don't know if I'll ever get out of that one. I've been a character a long time. You've been around me. I, I like to laugh. Okay? I have a shirt. has all the Bugs Bunny and, you know, Pepe Le Pew. Because I know I have a character. I don't want to be boring. I don't want to be, I'm not, don't cook, cookie cutter me out. Because I'll come off the wall like you have never heard. And you'll go, where'd that come from? Because I'm a character. I'm still being formed. I'm being formed into the what? The likeness of Christ, just like you and I are. There's always a transformation. He's always working on the depth of who, he, who we are. He wants that character of himself to be obvious. Living stones built together as a habitation for his presence. We are made into the likeness. And what the beauty of it is, he washes us with his word. Yes? And then what does he do? He looks at us and examines his work as any master would. He washes us with his word. Then he presents us to himself to examine, to see what his work looks like. And he's like, there, I am well pleased. Bless you guys. So just recognize that as we are going through the maturity, the ego removed, the character building, he's looking at the reflection of himself. He's looking at where he can be seen more clearly in our lives. All right, so there's the, just the intro. How about that? That's just the intro to get us back on track of where we've been for a while. Let me get my little thing woke up. All right. So here we are. You are a son or a daughter, are blessed because of the revelation God has given to you. Your revelation, don't be, let it be stolen. Don't forsake your revelation. Write those revelations down. Keep them before you. You know, if you've been around me long enough, you've been, you come up here, you see i got sticky notes all over up here. So I'm going to read just a few of them. These are up here all the time for me to see. You can, you can peek at them if you'd like. You're not going to get hurt. So the first one says, this place has the fullness of Holy Spirit in it. It is our ability to perceive that fullness that must increase. I see this room so swimming full of Holy Spirit's presence from the floor to the rafters to inside the walls, and it's pouring out the roof, and it's in my ability to perceive it needs to increase. God bless you. So this is, this is how I see things. So I had that right up on the pulpit. And then I have this one. If we don't make the investment, we can't reap the benefits. So you know what? That's true. As I invest and God invests in us and I invest in others, I can draw a benefit from that. I can benefit as you guys are transformed into the likeness of Christ and you get to love better. Man, you guys start loving on each other, and it takes a big burden off of me because I don't have to be the one running around taking care of everybody. You ought to learn how to take care of yourselves. When I was growing up, my mom and dad, they did things, and we had to take care of ourselves as kids. Now, oh my gracious, the state's so intense on things. It's like, you can't leave your children now alone if they're under this age because you have a, we'll come and take your children away. Man, when I was a kid, if I knew how to reach the sink and flush the toilet, I, my, my parents were happy and they would go. And my brother was four years younger than me and I took care of my brother. Okay? That's just how it was. So as I learned to take care of my brother and we took care of each other, it, was, it took a burden off my folks. Well, I expect you guys to love on each other. I expect when you don't see somebody here, give them a call. Don and Cleo have been sick. Don's fell down a couple times this week. Be praying for them. If you get a chance, give them a call. If you don't have their number, come and ask me. Because they need to feel loving. Andy's been uh, going through some stuff surgery-wise, and, and uh, Carla the same way. They need your lovings. They need your encouragement. Give them a call. Drop by. Send them a card. Because you know what? Love from me is one thing, but love from y'all, that's what binds us together. Okay? All right, another one. The Bible is the written record of God's covenant journey with mankind. Absolutely. Would you send a love letter to your best love that was full of, oh, go over here and chop his head off or go kill that guy or go out there and burn those people up? That's not much of a love letter, but, you know, you look in the Bible, there's a whole lot of that in there. I don't call the Bible a love letter. All right? And I also have 3, 5 to 7, and 10. That's the vision that we're working under right now. So I put these things down because I, I need to have them as a memorial to where we're going. So when you have those revelations, God gives you a revelation, write them down. Put them on your mirror. Put them on your refrigerator. 
I know that Marcus and Hollis, they have a whole board, they, and they work out this board, their project, and their vision for their, their business. Okay? It's, it's what we do. So, next, the kingdom is within you. Nobody shouted amen. Okay, I'm going to say this again. I'll try one more time. Brandon, the kingdom of God is within you. Woo, yes. Okay, there, thank you, sir, for topping texting. You're good. So, okay, okay, take, okay, keep notes. So the kingdom of God is within you. Do you believe it? If you believe it, then experience it. That's why I'm, I'm, that's, wait a minute, Pastor Mike, you can't, you can't just say that. Yes, I did. Didn't you just hear me? I just said it. Whether you believe it or not, that's up to you. I can't make up your mind for you. But I know the kingdom of God is within me. It is overtaking me. It's blowing the doors off my life. I can hardly stand it. There's only so much blessings I can keep my wagon. You know why? Because my blessings are not for me. They're supposed to spill out and show around on y'all. That's how this is supposed to function. Now, I brought something today. Where is it at? There it is. See this? This is a pop bottle. Now, I'm from Segertown, which is where Sharon Stone really went to school, not Meadville. And Segertown is a, it, make, it makes Prineville look like New York City. Okay? They had one red light. And I think it, 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 when I was growing up, there was only one bank. All right? Little bitty town, Segertown. Now, when I was growing up, I had a friend, Joe Nadget. We were friends in fifth grade. And, I, and that was my friend only friend and I would go to his house and I'd stay overnight and we had a lot of friendship he had a really cool dad and he had like he had seven brothers or something seven brothers and sisters a whole bunch of them and Bob was was his dad and his dad was laid back highly intelligent man oh man he was like crazy cool crazy smart and Bob ran the Segertown bottling company all right and growing up, this was the pop you drank. I mean, you had Coke and you had Pepsi, but this was the one you stayed with the locals. And and Bob would run the plant, and I got to go down with Joe because his dad ran the plant. I'd go down, I'd put bottles in little boxes, and they'd put them in the big crates, you know, the, the wooden crates, and we'd ship them out all over the place. And um, eventually, what happened, my mom and dad got divorced, and my friend Joe's mom passed away. And what happened, because Joe and I were friends, our folks got to know each other. What happened was my dad and mom got divorced. Bob was a widower, and my mom and Bob got together, and they got married. So suddenly my best friend is now my brother, and I have all these other brothers and sisters and stuff. And when we were kids, we'd go down to the pop plant, and we'd put those things in, and we'd get a free bottle of pop. And I handled these bottles. They had this size and 32 ounces. So there's the back, background story. Now, Bob died. You, you remember the story about my stepdad, Bob? Okay, he bought, died over a year ago. And you remember I prayed, and he was gone in 18 minutes. And uh, so I've always wanted to have one of these bottles. And a friend of mine, Megan O'Hara, who was a classmate of mine, found one of these buggers in Newport on the south side of the bridge in an antique store. So there's the whole backstory. So this week, Patty and I are on the coast. And we were walking around. It was antique week, and we are just scoping things out. And we got into, and this was not anywhere on my radar. So I'm just wanting you to know, the Holy Spirit's always still talking. So we walk around, and we're looking at all this cool stuff in this antique store. And we came across, in the bend of this one place, there was all these bottles sitting. And you got a microphone, Patty? Because you're going to need one here in a second. So, I, and I walked around, I saw these pop bottles, and I said, where's my Segertown ginger ale bottle? And I said, here it is. And there it was, smack dab in the middle of all these bottles. Now that popped out of my mouth before my head could think. Because Holy Spirit just went, and it popped out of me like, like a burp when you're not expecting it. And I was like, it was beyond my brain thinking about it. It just came out, and Patty walked right over and says, here it is. That was a desire I've had for a long time, but it wasn't on the radar. Oh, yes, yes, Patty. Just to clarify, Segertown is in Pennsylvania. Yes, I'm sorry, Pennsylvania. Little bitty town in Pennsylvania. South of Erie, north of Pittsburgh. But there it was, and, and you know, if this bottle could talk, I may have even touched this bottle when I was a kid, putting them in the boxes. 
and, and to know that it came all the way from the East Coast and ended up in a store on the West Coast, and it was there, and then boom, there it came out of my mouth, and Patty walked over and picked it up. Here it is. That's the goodness of sonship and wholeness and oneness with the Spirit. It was something that had been on my heart to have, for a, but it wasn't even on my radar. But God adjusted my walk. There you go. If it's the Lord, tell him. I'll, I'll talk to him later. So it's just recognizing that you don't even know what you want sometimes, but he knows your heart's desire. And you know what was really funny? After I found that one, it was I was finding them everywhere on the coast. I ran into another, and I'm like, there's another one. There's another one. And then yesterday when I was going through our junk drawers as we were rearranging our house, I found one of the original labels that are paper stuck in the very bottom of a cabinet. So I was like, you're just being really over the top with this, aren't you? Because he wants me to know that my desire is his desire just to kiss me on the forehead because he loves me. And I am not special. We're like every one of us in this room. His heart's desire is to kiss you on the forehead, to bless you like that. He wants you to understand how involved he is in your life, that to, to will he is at work in you to will and to do for His good pleasure. What is His will? To love. All He wants, His will is for you to love Him back. We put that whole thing here. Oh, this is a dirty word, but I'm going to go ahead and say it right here. Work. Work is a dirty word. The only work you have to worry about is receiving and reflecting and giving back. You don't have to sit there and try to grunt out something to be accepted. His love is already overpowering, and, and his, He's the one that's doing all the work. All He wants you to do is the will. The will is just going, yeah, I like that. To will and to do and to work for His good pleasure. That work word, I don't like it. And I'm not going to go into all the Greek and other stuff. I just want you to realize to do wants you to just do what he wants you to do and that bottom line is love it's all rooted in love all he's working this work in you for his god who is at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure his good pleasure is love he just wants us to love that was the only command that jesus ever gave one is to love and that little bottle that that god blessed me with amongst all the other blessings that i got this last week was just to nurture and cultivate love between us. It's really simple. It's so simple, it's hard. We've been taught to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Good Lord, get off the bandwagon on that one. I'm not working. Okay, work out your salvation. What does that really mean to me? Mike's paraphrase. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I am working it out by sitting back and receiving His work in me so that I will naturally, naturally will to do His good pleasure. Think about that. You ponder on that this week, and your life won't be the same come Saturday. I'll give you till Saturday. Some of us are a little strong-willed. It may take till Saturday to get that one out. But you know what? I'm about Monday morning. <laughs> I'm done. I'm fully receiving. I'm fully, bless you, fully receiving it, fully walking in it, in Jesus' name. All right, back to notes. I'm trying. I'm really trying here. All right. The kingdom is within you. woo -hoo! See, because the kingdom of God is in you, see like Jesus Christ sees. Get that filter on you. Get that religious filter off. Get off that other stuff and start seeing like Christ sees. When Christ sees somebody, when I saw, I saw the Lord come in here and walk back there and put his arm out and, and escort you and replace you in a new place and say, I've brought you from the back and I'm putting you in the front because I want you closer to me. You're not rejected. You're not someone that should hide out. You're a beautiful expression of who I am and I want everybody to see you. I'm so proud of you. It's like, you know, this is how Jesus is. This, look, look at how beautiful she is. Look at the, what dad's doing in her life. Isn't it awesome? I can see him in there. 
I see my dad in there. This is what the work is that he's doing inside of us. See as Christ sees. Start seeing each other like this. You can envision your destiny by agreeing with God's dream for you. Man, there's a sticker or a refrigerator magnet. You can envision your destiny by agreeing with God's dream for you. Envisioning is seeing it beforehand, and then you walk into it. You have to have a vision before you know where you're going. You have to have a dream before you start pressing in and seeing how your character and maturity and your re- the ego is removed. That's part of the transition. It doesn't happen overnight. You can't be like me in a day. You don't want to be like me in a day. You could maybe tolerate what I go through in a day. You don't want it for more than one day. Okay, the things that I face, the things that you face, I don't want to see what you guys have to face. That's for you. That's Christ working in you for his glory. God's working is going on inside of you, not your own. All right? Stop trying to fix yourself. You dump out a thing, a bunch of pieces of Legos, who builds it? Does the Legos start sticking themselves together? Let's hope not. I'm leaving the house if they start sticking themselves together. Something wrong here. Okay? But you know what? When God puts things out there and he starts assembling them and he, start, he starts to give, and give form to his vision inside of you, agree with it. All right? As I stepped into this life, when I got that call back in 1982, but Mike, what he's doing, you're supposed to do. Okay. Don't know what that. I don't know how that works, but I'm 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 agreeing with you. So you're gonna have to walk me through this. And it, man, it's been a walk since I was 1982. I was what, 21, 22. Okay, 21. I've been walking this a long time. Did I give up? Well, I tried a couple times. Didn't have the opportunity and the you know, it's like that, that's not your choice, man. You don't give up. You can't walk away from this. It's on you. And everywhere you go, there you are. So this is your calling. You're not gonna run from it. Okay, fine. Okay, I'm going to work out this, this with fear and trembling because this is my salvation. This is mine. This is my work that God's doing in my life. You can look at it. You can watch it. You can emulate what God's doing in my life, but you can't have it because it's not yours. And I can look at what God's doing in you, and I can go, man, I love seeing what God's doing in your heart. It's not mine. I can't take it. It's yours. God will work in your flavor. We're almost there. Kingdom dynamics is what I'm talking about. All right, Philippians 1 6. Let's go there and I'll close. You got a good introduction. Oh, I lost a nut. My chair is falling apart. I knew I was a nut, but I didn't know I'd lose him like that off my chair. For I am, what's that word? Confident. What does that mean? Oh, man, it's beyond I know. Yeah, I mean, I am confident. It's like I've drawn the line in the sand. You come over here, it will not bode well for you. This is where I know that I am solid as a rock. I am confident you will not argue me off this place. I, my feet are standing on the rock, and I will kick devil butt. If it dares to show its ugly pinhead over here, it is confidence. You will not move me. You can sit there and say everything you want about it, but this is where I stand on Christ. This is my cornerstone, and I am not going to be moved. So I am confident of this very thing. In other words, I don't care what you have to say because blah, 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 not listening, la, 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 la. Because I am confident you will never move me. You won't. God can move me. I am teachable, but you're not going to change my mind on this. This is what he's really trying to tell to you. For I am confident of this very thing. This one thing, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is immovable in the kingdom. That he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1.6 I know whether you give up on yourself, whether you blah, 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 blah. This is not stoppable. You will not stop God. You will not 
He who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. In other words, you might as well give up now because he is not changing his mind how he sees you. He has not changed his mind about his vision for you. He has not worked out the entire work of your life and said, oh, by the way, they don't want this. Pull the plug. He is not, you have no, nothing to do with this. Well, but, but pastor, I can do this to, to abort it. No, you can't. He's going to work around your objections until your will becomes part of his perfect will for your life. There you go. I know I do. I did not want to do these things. That's right. He doesn't lose sheep. It doesn't happen. He doesn't give up. So don't worry about you. Oh, I blew it. Oh, God left, and I'm over here. Oh, I'm on a desert island. And I've only got a coconut to eat. I don't even have two sticks to rub together. God's boat floated and it's gone. There goes Wilson. That's right. Wilson's gone. And I cannot walk on water. Oh. There you go. The old Eeyore with the cloud. Okay. That, no. No. God does not have a, a, a reject stamp to go. <coughs> to stamp on you. That you've blown it. He goes. That's all? That's, this is your problem? No. That's not what the completed work of Christ on the cross does. It doesn't do that. You are not rejected. You're not like, oh, burp, you're too smelly for me, bucko. Sorry. No. no, that is not a part of his heart. His heart is and his nature, divine nature of God is love. All right? Bottom line. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You want to fear and tremble? Man, fear and tremble of how powerful and unrelenting his love is. That will make you shake. That will make the hair on your head stand on end. It's like, you know what? I know who I am, and he still loves me. How can he love me like that? And you quiver on the inside because that love surrounds and swallows you. That is the beginning. That is one of the keys of sonship, daughterhood. That's just one. And I didn't even get past my first two little blocks, maybe the third one on the app. So stand with me, please. Hallelujah, Lord. You are fully and wholly accepted in the bride. He who began a good work in you. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Choose a neighbor. Got a neighbor? I got Brandon. He's mine. He, look him in the eyes. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Christ Jesus, despite what you're doing. <laughs> yes, despite what you're doing. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Christ Jesus. It has nothing to do with you sweating and grinning and gritting your teeth. He is pouring out a blessing on you that you cannot receive. And the reflection of his heart, of who he is, will shine through you. And someone goes, oh, I see. I know you. I know you. I know you. You know Christ in me, my hope of glory. Father, I thank you for my family. I thank you for them. They're blessed in your eyes. I thank you. I speak blessing over this house, over every individual here. I thank you for open doors. And, Father, for dreams restored. Dream Who's got a dream that's been robbed from them? There's a dream that's been robbed. Oh, yeah, get your hands up. Get your hands up. All right. Okay, good. I'm telling you, keep them up. Don't put them down. If you've got a dream that's been stolen, I want the hands up. All right, Father, you see these hands. I talked about dreams. You're the dream maker. So, Father, I thank you that you are inspiring and breathing life back into these dreams. No matter what it is, there's nothing I can do about this. But, Lord, well, Lord, we set our eyes on you. We lay this dream at your feet for you to breathe life into it, that our faith would be renewed. And, the Lord, you are on the scene. You're on the work. You're on the way. You're always having it happen right now. Lord, encourage our hearts. We encourage ourselves in the Lord like David did. We give ourselves the encouragement to keep pushing and pressing and holding on to that dream as you bring life to it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Love on each other. I love you. We'll see you next week.